Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today in this light bite on the circular economy. My name is Nick Kelso and I'll be your presenter. So let's begin. I'd like to start with a story. In 2005, Dame Ellen MacArthur became the fastest person to sail around the world single-handed. Being alone on a sailing yacht for months on end and without seeing land made her extremely aware of the limits of her supply of food and fuel. Once she'd made it around the world and had stepped back ashore, she began to see that our world is not very different. As she explained, we are living in a linear economy where materials are extracted to make products. These products are then used for a while and then are disposed of when no longer needed. But in a world with a growing population and increasing resource constraints, this model is simply no longer feasible. What is needed is a circular economy. A circular economy aims to decouple economic growth from the use of natural resources by using these resources more effectively. It is an economy that is regenerative by design, that is based on renewable energy and that minimizes waste through the reuse of products, components and materials. Simply put, in a linear economy, we take, make and dispose products and materials, whereas in a circular economy, we make, use and return them within a closed loop system. So what makes a circular economy relevant to us? At the current rate of production and consumption, we will need the natural equivalent of three planets Earth by 2050 in order to satisfy global demand. This is according to the WWF. As a result of these resource constraints, commodity prices have seen a rise of 150% between 2002 and 2010. The source for this is McKinsey. Furthermore, it is estimated that by 2025, we will be producing over 2.2 billion tonnes of waste per year. This is according to the World Bank report in 2012. This creates a drive for businesses and governments alike to start looking for more sustainable and regenerative models that reduce our dependency on limited and expensive resources and materials. These challenges that we are facing in a changing world and the opportunities that they bring us are driving us to rethink the future and the way we do business. The ambition of a circular economy is to move towards renewable energy and achieve zero waste. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation and McKinsey Consultancy have calculated that if we transition to a circular economy, we could achieve a global economic potential of $1 trillion per year in net material savings alone by 2025. So in addition to value for people and planet, the concept of a circular economy also promises significant economic value creation. The concept of a circular economy fits very well with the vision of our company to strive to make the world healthier and more sustainable through meaningful innovation. We believe the circular economy has the potential to drive innovation in products, systems and solutions and will help us positively contribute to a sustainable future for all. Philips Lighting aims to accelerate the transition to a circular economy in three main ways. By combining energy efficient solutions and renewable energy, by developing innovative new business models, and by aiming for zero waste while maintaining value both at a company and at a customer level. These three examples I will now elaborate on. In our drive towards a circular approach, we aim for less carbon intensive energy. The main drivers for this are 1. Energy efficiency, where we continue to innovate and produce state-of-the-art energy efficient solutions. 2. Connected lighting, which will help us further save energy via the intelligence of networked sensors. And 3. Renewable energy, such as solar powered LED lighting. Secondly, we are implementing new business models, which are essential in capturing the value of a circular economy. We have developed the concept of light as a service, an innovative new business model in which Philips retains ownership of all the products and materials, and customers gain access to high performance lighting solutions. With this model, customers receive the benefits 
of the latest state-of-the-art energy efficient lighting at the lowest operational cost. The light as a service model is enabled by design for a circular economy. By collaborating with our customers and suppliers and logistics providers and by looking at developing cost reverse logistics. Let me give you an example. In Washington DC 25 garages were upgraded from outdated conventional lighting to state-of-the-art LED technology through a light as a service contract. This lighting solution not only makes the garages safer and brighter but also reduces energy consumption by 68% saving over 11,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. Finally we aim to close the materials loop and have developed a new circular approach to this concept. On the left we see the traditional linear economy in which materials are extracted, manufactured into products, used by the consumer and then are sent to the landfill. On the right hand side we see the circular economy in which materials are recovered through selling products as a service by refurbishing used products or spare parts or through recovering materials for future products by recycling. As Philips Lighting, we currently focus on the service loop where we provide maintenance services and upgrades to keep a solution future-proof and extend the lifetime of the systems. At the end of life, we manage the products coming back via recycling. For example, Philips Lighting is co-owner of 22 collection and recycling service organizations in Europe to manage extended producer responsibility for the end of life lamps and luminaires. Implementing circular economy building blocks such as the light as a service, new circular economy design rules, intensified collaboration with partners and reverse logistics all requires new competencies, resources, tools and dedication. We see this transition as a long journey we want to go through with our stakeholders. In the area of product design we're experimenting with different ways to design our products for a circular economy extending the lifetime of our products through modular design and backward compatibility. For example, we have created a scorecard to assess the circularity of lighting products. Our products are measured on ease of maintenance, upgradability, modularity, ease of disassembly and ease of recycling. By deploying this scorecard throughout our organization, we can train our employees to look at our existing products and systems from a circular economy perspective and to show them how they can directly contribute to our transition. Like all major transitions in human history, the shift from a linear to a circular economy will be a very significant one. It will feature pioneers and naysayers, victories and setbacks. But this transition to a circular economy is a promising journey. At Philips Lighting we strive to be a pioneer and we hope to inspire you to do the same. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.